Tom and Siri said cancer cells can use glutamine. Yes, they can. They can use anything. Therefore, we must eat low protein. That's bullshit. I've already covered that. I've done a video covering that in my cancer stuff. I've got people that are on cancer that are basically on a carnivore diet and they're reversing their cancer. Glutamate is just a fuel like anything. If you've got reverse Krebs cycle, you would drag in more glutamate and produce more lactate. You'll take glucose, you'll take protein, you'll take anything and convert it into lactate. Even fatty acids can be used by cancer cells. And there are some cancers that can even use ketones. Yes, there are. So um, just because Thomas doesn't isn't aware of the literature, there are some. And Ron Rosdale actually covers it in one of his videos. The exact, uh, there's, you know, I probably should do a video covering and just say, look, these cancers can actually use ketone bodies. So it's not, so really, you know, the reality is that every single bloody thing can use. Normal cells need this sort of stuff. I mean, right down at the bottom of the actual, the actual, um, the Krebs cycle coming into it is glutamate. There's a receptor. It's not there by accident. You know, we need things because remember the mitochondria also, you know, the Krebs cycle is also involved in the production of proteins as well. You know, certain amino acids that the body requires that can be synthesized and other things like that. So the energy is being used for a lot of different things in the body. You know, we view the Krebs cycle as this round of thing. It's really just think of it that and all these connections to different parts within the mitochondria and different mechanisms within back into the cell and whatever else. There's just all these connections. We just can't show them like that. That's why we show them in the in the form we do. Right into the electron chain, there's all these different different parts of that Krebs cycle actually connect directly into parts of the Krebs cycle as well, into, into the complexes. So, you know, it's a bit more complicated. We show it in a more simplistic um, form. You cannot, because remember, glutamate, stuff like that is part of collagen structures. If you don't feed your body enough protein, what will the body do? It will break down tissue. What's the biggest problem that people who are sick um, suffer? They suffer basically sarcopenia and, uh, you know, and basically wasting away. That's not the good. Pro it usually kills them because some of these protein structures also required. I mean, I guess also required for the immune system. So if you don't eat enough protein, your immune system is going to be weaker. Your immune system is the thing that actually fights off cancer. It's just because we've we've created too much cancer and overwhelm the immune system. It can't fight as well. But if we heal the immune system and strengthen the immune system with with taurine, vitamin D, we bring up our levels. Why do you think vitamin? Vitamin D is associated with um, cancer as an anti-cancer. It's not accidental. People that have got higher vitamin D levels tend to have better outcomes. That's not accidental. Again, because it's supporting the immune system. Taurine, eating more animal foods, you get more taurine. What does taurine do? It reduces immunosenescence. So it reduces the senescence of the immune system. Each time the immune system goes out there, kills a cancer cell or a virus or whatever, you know, it undergoes some damage in attacking these things. Well, something needs to basically heal it. The upregulation of intra intracellular antioxidants like glutathione, um, superoxide dismutase, catalase, they help. And taurine actually upregulates these as well and regulates them. There you go with a carny diet. So it is absolute nonsense all this sort of stuff and thomas doesn't understand he understands that it is a mitochondrial problem yes it is but he doesn't understand it's a deuterium problem fundamentally it's an energy thing it's not that mitochondria are damaged it's my it's the it's the electron chain is not working properly and the and the nanomotors that are producing atp are not have been damaged by deuterium when you lower the deuterium level and then you use taurine and melatonin you can actually slowly heal those mitochondria 
And when you heal those mitochondria of the electron chain, the energy restores. Guess what happens? Those oncogenes get downregulated. So the genes do happen as well because the genes are trying to work out new methods of trying to maintain the actual cell because now it's not part of the soma, part of the body. So it's trying to find ways of actually adapting to the new environment. And that's what all these upregulation, that's why the oncogenes are so different. And that's why the other crackpots at the other end that are talking about, oh, it's all about oncogenes. Um, no, it's not. That is due to signaling where the mitochondria say, look, mate, we've just had all these high deuterium foods from you for years. You know, we've had all these high amounts of neutrons. We, we love the protons and we love the electrons. But when you give us a lot of neutrons from deuterium, because that's H2 um, hydrogen, not the H1, which only has a proton that goes through the nanomotor, spins it up to six to 9,000 RPM and produces ATP energy for the body to heal itself and do everything else. When in the, all those folds you have all these electron chains and you damage each one of those and you reduce them and diminish them, and that mitochondria then only has one or two electron chains left, can't produce enough ATP. And if it can't produce enough to ATP... You know, those little um, organelles, those little mitochondria move through the cytosol inside the cell, going to different parts of the cell, providing ATP energy so it can actually do things and heal things. But if it can't produce that energy, you know what it does? It sends a signal to the actual cell and goes, look, sorry, mate, I cannot supply you with ATP. And the, and the you know, the, the nucleus goes, oh, shit. I'm going to play all these programs, these primitive programs before oxygen existed on the planet, before the great oxygenation, well, Holocaust for 90 plus percent of species at the time who weren't adapted to oxygen, a very small amount survived and then they thrived. But uh, at that stage, um, uh, you know, when multicellularity happened, these mechanisms got downregulated because they were old, old code. We still have that code in ours. If you take a look at an animal, when it actually, it, it, when it's um, it's early, it'll actually go through all its different evolutionary steps and actually will, you know, as it's inside gestating and changing, you'll get a tail that emerges, then it will contract. It goes through all these programs, the steps that the sort of the lineage, so to speak. So that actually happens. What is that telling you? That's telling you it's running all these old programs, but then turning them off at the different stages of over the over the um, those initial months and then the nine months it's mostly the the human the the homo sapiens sapien genes that are that are the ones that actually then complete the actual baby so that tells you quite clearly that there is programming that is basically and there's a communication between the cell nucleus and the mitochondria. And one is saying, I can't provide the energy you need. So it goes, oh, I've got an old program I can run that I don't need to use oxygen to produce energy. I put the Krebs cycle into reverse, drag deuterium in, drag glutamate in and all that, and I start producing shitloads of lactate. You know, people go, oh, lactic acid. It's lactate. You twit, you twats. And lactate can be converted Go back to the to the liver, get converted to glucose, voila, there's your energy. So you can't stop energy. If you deny cancer cells the energy, you know what they'll do? They'll become, they'll go metastatic. They'll start invading to try and gri grab resources. You don't want that. Bad idea. Let's starve the cancer cells. No, we don't want them growing rapidly to try and survive. Bad strategy. This is what I'm saying. He understands that it's a mitochondrial issue, but that it doesn't understand why and doesn't understand this communication. So his theoretical understanding is, again, due to reduction of science, it's narrowly. He does the experiments. He took basically the nucleus of a cancer cell, put it in a cell with good mitochondria, nothing. Took the mitochondria that were damaged from deuterium he didn't he should have checked that and then basically put them into a normal cell 
and that cell became cancerous. Voila. Why wouldn't it be? It sent a signal back and said, you know, we as mitochondria, my dear um, uh, nucleus, cannot provide you the energy you need. So you need to run your old program. And that's exactly what it does. So, you know, it's exactly what it's supposed to do for its own survival as a cell. So it's just nonsense. Um, you know, he's a good guy. He's trying to do the right thing, but he's missing a lot of things. Then Laszlo, on the other hand, from the UCLA, he understands deuterium from the Russian research and how that damages the mitochondria. And then the cascading effect of the communication between the mitochondria, the signaling and the um, cell. And the cell itself realises, you know, it's going to have to use these old glycolytic pathways. So it elongates these long 28 sorry, 22 um, long um, fatty acids around its nucleus to protect itself from all the, the highly glycating factors and the high a level of reactive oxygen species being produced while producing lactate, you know? But it's get the, getting the energy that it needs to survive. It may not be a lot, but it gets it. Now, if you suppress it even more, what is it going to do to survive? It's going to become invasive. It's going to go metastatic. Not a good strategy. So what do we want to do? We want to do something which is intelligent. We want to stop the continued damage. So we want to use taurine, because what does taurine do? It inhibits um, uh, the ability for the Krebs cycle to produce lactate. It forces it the other way. It, it inhibits reverse Krebs cycle. So it starts forcing it down to produce ATP. So that's one thing, even though it can't, because it's damaged, it can only produce very little. But it's still forcing it down there and producing metabolic water, but it's, you know, it's not basically producing everything that it needs. It's a problem. Yes, it is. You get a bit, bit of water logging that actually happens, but this is the important. Then you're putting in the taurine, which is amplifying, as long as you keep the blue light away in the evening, you're amplifying melatonin. And taurine can actually heal and help regulate the intracellular antioxidants to heal part of the electron train. A lot of the actual the nanomotors, a lot of that is done primarily from melatonin. It Because the mitochondria can produce their own melatonin. So not only the pineal gland, it's also um, the actual um, mitochondria themselves. And it's to heal the actual electron chains. And as these heal, the cell then gets a signal, I can provide you ATP, master cell, my Lord. And guess what the Lord says? Mm, I don't need to run this old, you know, very, you know, messy um, uh, with high reactive oxygen species. So it really smells. And we stop that and we downregulate oncogenes. And then the cell moves to senescence. And then you keep your immune system strong to kill those senescent cells off. Taurine also is can actually tell senescent cells to go apoptotic and goodbye um, in that regard. And on the other hand, we use synolytics, physotin, and we amplify them to 680%. There's information on how to do that in those videos. That's a strategy we use to reverse cancer, to inhibit cancer, and to slowly strengthen the body and all that. The last thing we want to do is starve it from protein. Absolute nonsense it is. And most of my people are still around that have got cancer and are still doing carnivore and maintaining good body mass. And leucine only drives muscle growth. It doesn't... Uh, you need glucose to drive um, what is called to drop. If you want to drive um, in the fat cells or in certain other cells, you want to drive, for instance, um, mTOR, you need glucose. Protein only drives in the bones um, and it's selective where um, protein, it binds to those selectively. And so does taurine in the bones. And that's why it's really good for bone growth. So that's why my father has such strong bones at 88. Got knocked, thrown, and still survived. He was in a lot of, let's say, pain with a lot, um, 
you know, blue on the side, you know, from a lot of severe bruising, but not a fracture in sight, let alone a broken bone. So, yeah, I don't buy all this. Sort of, these are reductionist researchers, you know. They need to get out of the lab, get a girlfriend, you know, live, live a bit of their life, you know. Maybe that they'll see more of the world. You know, when you're more travelled and you see all sorts of things, you can do things more than one way. You start being able to see the world more wider rather than in the reductionist way that they um, they study and research. And they get fixated. Oh, I found a pathway. I found something that actually does this. Yeah, fine. It's like Laszlo's, um, you know, they use deuterium depleted water. Voila, fantastic. Who gives a shit? Deuterium depleted water is good. It lowers the level of deuterium in the system. It reduces any more damage. But you're not, you haven't fixed the mitochondria, have you? You need the melatonin side and you need the, the taurine side and good sleep and stuff like that. You know, they're missing that part. And all they do is they lower the actual and they're hoping and slowly some people recover, others don't recover as well. And it works with dogs fantastically. Guess why? And it doesn't work with cats. They don't produce any taurine. Guess what? Dogs produce more taurine than humans endogenously. Got it? There's the secret that Laszlo's missing, the deuterium people um, are missing. So that's the difference between me and them. I, I'm not reductionist. I'm trying to see all the relationships and the connections. And so that's why I come up with solutions, basically because I come from an engineering background. We love solutions. We don't, we're not in, interested in theorising. You know, how do these things work? That's what I'm interested. And how do these, if this interacts with that, it interacts with that, what, what result am I going to get? Well, that interests me. And that's the way of actually thinking like an engineer. If more of these researchers thought like engineers, they'd probably come up with really radical solutions, much better than the shit that they come up with. Anyway, there are, yeah, I've had my debunk <laughs> and, my, and my rant. <laughs> I don't even need to make a video. I can, I can just debunk them like that. <laughs>